everyone, welcome to Hlan Glosslin. You're going to have to excuse my English pronunciation of some of these places today because Hlan Glosslin is a Welsh town. It sits on the River Dee in Denbyshire in Wales, it's about seven miles from the English border. Today we're going to have a little tour around, I'm going to show you some of the places and show you why you should really come and visit. It's a beautiful little town. So it takes its name from the Welsh clan, a religious settlement, and the Gothen at the end is there was an, a monk in the 7th century who came and founded the town. And in fact, this church behind me is St Gothen's Church, the church that founded the town way back in the 7th century. I've just had a little wander around the graveyard of the church. It seems to be that I, I can't get in at the moment, so that's a bit of a shame. But there are some very important graves here in the graveyard of Lady Eleanor Butler. And on the other side is Sarah Ponsonby. Now, these two ladies were known as the ladies of Hlangothlin. And we'll go in a little bit to the house and Plas Neward where they lived. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them. That little hill I just had to climb was quite steep. I decided to ignore the map was taking me one way. I decided to ignore it because I think, thought it's quicker to go this way. It's quicker, but it's a bit of a steep hill. We're just arriving here. Now, a bit of a breath. Ooh. So whilst we're on our way there, let me tell you a little bit about Sarah Ponsonby and Eleanor Butler. These two ladies, they lived in Ireland. And then for whatever reason, in 1778, they both fled their lives in Ireland. One was 16 and one was 23, and they came to live, live here in Llanclosslan. They came to this house and they became kind of celebrities in the area. Lots of people, or not just in the area, lots of famous people came to visit them, such as William Wordsworth, the Duke of Wellington, and it's because they they formed this bond we now we don't know whether it was um a romantic one but we seem to think that it was a romantic one and for whatever reason they just became kind of mini celebrities of the day now this gate is locked i can't get in here is the main entrance so the main gates lock at 9 p.m today i assume that's different depending upon the season Oh, and there's some little tea rooms here as well, and dogs are welcome in the courtyard. Let's head on through. Oh, here it gives you a bit more information on the different times, depending on the time of year. So, yeah, once home to the ladies of Langhoffen, Lady Eleanor Butler and Miss Sarah Ponsonby. I think you get tickets over here at the tea rooms. So I'm not going to head actually inside the house today, but I've just been and checked and the tickets are £7 for an adult, £6 for children and kids under five are free. And is there a car coming up behind me? No, we did a bit of barrier, he can't come. Well, look at this little kind of tower thing. Wow. Something that I love when I'm in Wales is that they use they use English and they use Welsh on every single sign. I don't know how many Welsh people actually do speak Welsh anymore. If you are Welsh, let me know. But I like that they include it on all their signs. A little wander down here. The house is just up this way. Wow, such a beautiful building. And look at the gardens. Mm. 
just look at all this carving. Wow. All sorts of different scenes. So that is Pass Neward, and I'll definitely recommend if you have a little bit more time than I have to head inside and get your tickets from the tea room. Now we are going to head over. We might try and find the river and walk along the river. We'll see how that goes. Um, but we're going to head over to something that Clan Gothwin is very famous for and that is their railway so this is Hanglothlin railway station there used to be a railway servicing goods and passengers back in the 19th and 20th century which was part of the great western railway but it was closed in 1965 to passengers and 1969 to freight and then the line was lifted that year as well more recently they have created this they've restored a 10 mile stretch between clan Glothlin and corwin and it operates purely just as a tourist attraction Train. This is the first class. I've just snuck on quickly whilst it's just at the station. There's first class. Looks nice. Not quite so comfy, but still nice, I think. There is, just as you come out of the train station, there's a little sign here that says Car and Motorcycle Museum, which is just that way. I have had a little look, and if you're interested in that sort of thing, yeah, I mean, by all means, but it's quite a small little thing. There's a sign there for the town centre, so I think we should head there next and check out what the town centre's like. Something I really love is just every so often when there's like a break between the buildings, it's just like the rolling hills in the background. It's so nice. Look, here's another one. It's just, I love it. The hills in the background. I wonder if you can hike up there. That looks pretty interesting. Looks like there's some big rocks or something. I'm not sure. I'd like to do it. Here in the centre of town, or near the edge really, it's kind of by the railway station, is Hanlon Museum and Art Gallery. Free admission. We'll have a little peek inside, hey? So, we've got Place Neward, the railway, the church, we will be visiting there later, and this place, I think that is what is on the top of that hill that we just saw. of the River Dee, amidst the beautiful and dramatic landscape of the Dee Valley. It is this picturesque... <laughs> There's a nice little kids area. Was an old one pound note worth four half crowns? No. <laughs> oh, we know this. Thank you. 
Thank you. Well, I have to say, what a wonderful little museum that is. I definitely recommend a little visit. It's a pretty unassuming building, <laughs> but yeah, really quite interesting. They've packed a lot into a little space. So here we are, heading into the town centre. Hang on a second, I've just noticed this. Walk the Hangoffen History Trail. So there's a little map here where you can walk. Walk the History Trail. Oh look, Castle Dina's Brand Castle. We'll have to head to there later on. But yeah, back to the town centre. I thought it might be pedestrianised to be honest, but so far it isn't. Maybe there is some that will be pedestrianised in a bit. <laughs> Lots of camping shops, or like outdoor pursuits kind of shops. But yeah, this is kind of, seems to be to me anyway, the main one sort of main stretch through the town. I have headed to Riverside Park incorporating Victoria Promenade. For some reason this is blocked off at the moment. I'm not allowed in there. So let's see if see what the situation is. So there's a, a kids play area through there. Possibly tea rooms or a pub or something. And I think this takes us down to a lovely riverside walk there's a little area here with picnic tables where you can enjoy a little picnic with lovely views over the river d and yeah kids play area a little place where you can buy coffees ice creams this is nice there's a little mini golf thing and a footy thing and basketball I have found the steps to get down, so we're going to have a little, little wander. I've not got the best shoes on, flip flops for this, but we'll uh, we'll cope the best that we can. It is pretty cool down here to have this this rock that you can kind of jump around and stuff, and then the river is more fast flowing over there. Hello, little ducks. This is a nice spot, I bet, on sunny days. Which it is supposed to be today, to be honest, but clouds, uh, <laughs> British weather. Um, yeah, I bet it's really quite busy here. I really like the idea of like getting a picnic and coming down here with the kids for a little bit. I'm gonna see. If I can get out this way, I think I can. There's some steps there. I'm not sure whether <laughs> the stones... Is there a path? Let me see, maybe this way. We'll try. Oh yeah, this should be easy. <laughs> it looked harder than it actually was. And there are the steps to get out. I've just left that little spot down there and there seems to be this is the kind of the river walk i think it heads back towards in fact the um the railway station is just up there as well that we saw before look at this such a nice setting this little pub here with a little uh, like i don't know what it's called it's not a balcony but over the river opposite the train station so nice, definitely sunny day. This would be a lovely place to enjoy a bit of a pub lunch. I have now left the town centre and I've headed up. And I've got to say the drive up was a little bit airy scary for me. I'm not very good at driving on a single track roads. It got pretty thin at times, pretty steep. Um, you can walk up here from the town centre. I think it's probably about, I think it's about a mile 
to get to this point and that but if you don't want to drive there is some parking up here i'm just parked on a little lay by there's enough space for maybe i don't know six six cars or so and castle dinas bran is just over there i've been contemplating how to get to it from here and i think i mean i can see a path there but i don't know how to get to that path i might go and have a little wander and see but it looks quite energetic to be honest it's quite steep maybe i'll change my shoes There we go, more appropriate shoes for walking. And we'll go and see, let's see if we can find how to head up there to Castle Dinas Brown. Really simple to get to, my van is just there. I've got to cross this cattle grid, got to love a cattle grid. And there's a gate just there to get up, so let's go. I think we're almost there. I'm extremely out of breath. Oh, oh wow. Well, don't know what I was expecting, but this wasn't it. Wow. Castle Dinas Brand is a medieval castle or ruins as it is now. And we think it was built around 1260, but there were probably structures up here before including an Iron Age hill fort, which is insane to me that like the Iron Age was 600 BC and we think that we have information that we, we know stuff about that time. It's crazy. It was so long ago. What became Dinas Bran, this large hill fort was built by a Celtic tribe named the Order Vices. Dinas Bran has been translated to various things over the years, including Crow's Fortress or Fortress of Bran, where Bran could be a person or a nearby stream. Crow Castle, an English name, has been used since the 18th century. During the time of Dinas Bran, when it was actually a castle and it's not ruins as it is now, there's not that much known about the castle itself, although it is presumed that it was fought over by the Welsh and the English, just because of its location, it's right kind of on the border there. And eventually it was just left to fall to ruin. Right, we are on our way back down. Hopefully I can make it. <laughs> and I have one more place to show you. Here we are at our last destination. It's about an eight minute drive from Llangollen. These Welsh names. As an English person, they're just really not easy to say at all. And it's only gonna get worse because the place we have come to is called, excuse me for my complete butchering of this, is Ponca. Ponkasloth, I don't know, I can't even. I have actually just Googled how to pronounce it and I can't. Ponkasloth Aqueduct, something like that. And it's nicknamed the Stream in the Sky. When we get over there, you'll see exactly why it is nicknamed that. It is the longest and highest aqueduct in the whole of Britain. You can do canal boat trips across it. I think it's about 11 mile stretch of canal. You can also, which I would love to do this, I think I'd probably be petrified, but you can hire a canoe and canoe across this stretch of canal. I, like I say, I'd be terrified to do it, but I think I would really quite like to do it. So my plan is to walk along the top of it and then get down to the bottom and see if I can get some views of it from, from further away. But look at this, people canoeing along this tiny little stream. On one side, there's like no barrier. It's just a massive, massive drop down to the side. I did see a photo of some like crazy stupid, I'm gonna call them stupid, uh, YouTuber, I think they were, who were like supping along it, like standing up. I understand in like sitting down in your canoe, but I would not be standing up supping along that. Like it's just a sheer drop down to the other side. It's mental. It seems crazy that anyone would, would do that. But yeah, canoeing along it, I think would be pretty cool.
All right, let's turn around and we'll head back the other direction and we'll try and find the way down. I did see a lady before that said there were some steps somewhere around here that you can get down and get a view a little bit further away. There's loads of hiking trails around here as well, which would be nice to do if you had more time. That's it up there. I think we can access it this way. You can just see it there, poking through the trees. It's incredible. What a feat of engineering. Okay, here's the steps. The lady told me there was lots of steps. I think this is the spot. They've got a little, um, like, old school camera here where... Please take a photo through this camera of your fabulous landscape. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's the Welsh name for meaning the bridge that connects, which means makes a lot of sense. It's an 11 mile stretch of canal that goes from Wales to England. Time to tackle these steps. That is it for my time in Hongoflin. Definitely recommend a visit. There's so much to do with the train line, the amount of walks and hikes that there are. If that's your thing, it's definitely my thing. It's a beautiful area of the country. Uh, and finishing off with this aqueduct here, so fantastic. You could definitely spend more than a day here. A long weekend or something you know if you wanted to go into Plath Neward the house of Sarah and Eleanor if you actually went on the train and did that which is visited some different places you could do some canal activities hire a canoe go on a go on a, a canal boat there is so much to do and I have really enjoyed my time here thank you so much for watching this one and I will see you in the next bye